So hi everyone, we are going to talk about multinational corporation and some crises that two uh, major companies have been through and how they have uh, managed to build up their reputation. I'm Dunya, I'm Marissa Pihai. And here's what we're going to talk about. We're first going to introduce how we did our research, then we're going to talk about the two corporations we wanted to look at, and then finally we're going to uh, come up with a conclusion. So in our presentation, we used two case studies to observe how multinational corporations do to handle um, a crisis that is caused by product defici def deficiency. And so the product deficiency came from uh, allegate, no, allegation, sorry, and facts that um, companies use to, uh, to try to like, decrease the cost of production. And finally, we're gonna like, touch on how these two companies um, did to uh, use successful PR practices to maintain their reputation and rebuild their brand. So I will talk about IKEA and the crisis that happened in 2013, about the fact that they were selling uh, meatballs containing horse meat. And I'm going to talk about Budweiser or Anheuser-Busch and how they have been dragged into court for uh, accused of watering down their beers and decreasing the cost of, produ of production by adding water to the beers. So the pre-prices for IKEA, so it all started in November 2012 when um, the, food, uh, the Food Safety Authority of Ireland started to do some tests uh, in some companies in Ireland which were using uh, cheap uh, frozen products and they, they had found out that some products were uh, contained horse meat. However, because of some complexities and issues, they, they, they were asked to redo some tests. So it's, um, it's not until mid-January 2013 that the whole crisis actually like erupted, and it rapidly spread across Europe because of the the very like complexity of the supply chains in Europe. Um, on Budweiser's hand, uh, what happened is that in 2008 they uh, got bought off by uh, Inbev, which is one of the largest uh, brewing companies in the world. And when they merged, they then moved the king of beer here in the United States. They moved their headquarters to Belgium which then Americans uh, lost, lost employment, but also lost their favorite brand. So there has already been some issues with the public in 2008, which was why this crisis could have happened. So the crisis for IKEA really started on February uh, 25th, 2013. I know myself, I've been, I've been eating meatballs in Samyang. Uh, I'm guessing you have, we, you all have like tried meatballs, but Yes, like you're lucky because in America they were not, uh, they, they didn't contain uh, horse meat. I might have, I have, I might have eaten horse meat meatball, but I'm still alive, so <laughs> it's not a, it's not a health issue. So it all started after food inspectors from uh, Czech Republic found um, DNA of horse meat in IKEA's meatballs. So as soon as they knew about that, IKEA like recalled and withdrew all its meatballs, and so um, they were very. Um, Honest with the customers, and as soon as they knew about that, they, they issued press releases about it uh, to inform uh, what stores were uh, affected by the, the crisis. And so, as I said, because of the complexity of the supply chains in Europe, it very quickly affected many countries, so over 24. And so, for IKEA, it was more like a, a customer tr a trust uh, issue than a financial issue because many like consumers were shocked by the fact that they could have been eating horse meat. And so it was a, cult a cultural taboo for the customer, and there was no, it was not toxic. On Budweiser's end, they actually uh, started a lawsuit at the exact same time when IKEA got in, in their crisis. So it was uh, former employees as well as consumers that were complaining, and former employees were, were explaining that during the production, after they've tested the percentage of alcohol, they would then add water to make it seem like there's more beer. Um, and then the consumers were complaining, saying that Budweiser tasted watery, which it has always tasted, it's a light beer. So um, they start, the consumers were really angry because they thought that they had been betrayed and that they had been paid premium price for a beer that had actually been watered down and that Anheuser-Busch now was pressured to uh, lower the cost of production and they then added water to their beers. However, after um, two weeks um, during that lawsuit, uh, Budweiser came out to be innocent and um, they've, ev they've tested their beers and checked if they were actually watered down and if they were mislabeled. 
but uh, Budweiser actually was respecting the law and the percentage of alcohol was right. The only problem is that then, in the mind of consumers, as we know, on social media and in the news, it went really fast. So consumers were feeling betrayed and their uh, image was really um, affected. So they only came with, um, Budweiser was confident and they knew that uh, their regulations were respected. So they only came with uh, two statements saying that those accusations were groundless and that their beer was in full compliance and that they would always produce quality beer. And also, IKEA actually like filed uh, a police report against a Swedish supplier that had bought uh, tainted meat from two Polish abattoirs. So IKEA actually like responded pretty well. They, they didn't act as a victim but as a vindicator. So as soon as they knew about it, they like recalled all the meatballs, like ton of, tons of them. And uh, they also issued press releases like all along, like from the crisis to the post crisis, because um, customers and product quality really matter for IKEA. And so they were able to uh, put the meatballs, the meatballs back on the shelves at the end of March. And as IKEA really like uh, value sustainability, they also said that they were going to re uh, relabel all the meatballs and also like keep the ones that contain horse meat because at the end it's not like a health, it's not toxic, it's not harmful. And so uh, all the benefits and profits from these meatballs would go to the charities instead of wasting food. They wanted to like make sure that. Like to, they, they wanted to like um, insisting on the values and sustainability, and so uh, they 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 maintain a good like uh, customer. Uh, they they were able to like get their like reputation back because of uh, the way they were very honest and transparent with the customer. Uh, on Budweiser's hand, so since uh, they had their reputation had been affected, they uh, started to do two huge campaigns. The first one was uh, what you can see here. They published that in ten newspapers and on social media. So they donated cans of water to the to Flint, Michigan, when they didn't have drinkable water. So by doing this and by uh, putting some humor into a campaign, they kind of regain uh, customers' trust by saying, hey, uh, they must have tested those. Like, this is water. That's why it tasted watery. And uh, they also wanted to underline the fact that they actually cared about their community and that they invested themselves in helping others. And the other campaign that they did um, is uh, track your Budweiser. So you can now track where your uh, Budweiser is. If they made sure that they uh, posted a video showing the brewmasters how proud they were of their products and how much they cared about the quality of their products and what they were making. So observation, so IKEA, as I said, was very uh, transparent and open with its customers. They were really honest and also proactive because as soon as they knew about like the, the possibility that the product could contain horse meat, they started to do in-house tests but it turned out to be negative, so they were like, they were like denying the, the issue, but it's only, like I said, it at, uh, in the end of February that um, they found out that some of the products actually contain horse meat. So uh, since, uh, after that, they were like apolo apolo apologizing, and they were also like insisting on the fact that uh, they would never tolerate any other ingredients than the ones mentioned um, on their labels, and they were also, they wanted to remind that they, uh, that they care for the customers and the consumers and they will do everything to fix that issue. Uh, they also incorporated the values in their responses, the sustainability, customer matters, uh, product quality. Um, and but why did the same? So they stayed really transparent and they only released one statement from the vice president as saying that they uh, reminding their values as well as saying that those accusations were false and that they didn't want their brand to be damaged by this. So, and uh, they then did that campaign in order to uh, rebuild customers' trust. And they were also very responsive on social media because many people started to make a funny posts. So one post would be like a plate with a horse on it because they were selling like horse meat, like meatballs. So that could very affect them. And like social media is a very like, a very like, it's a platform where everybody has a voice and you can like, it's like a two-way communication. So because of that, they were like, we need to engage with the customer and make sure that they know that it's not harmful. And so, yeah, they were very uh, responsive on social media. So for our conclusion, uh, multinational corporations are huge, and the bigger they are, the problems that they uh, have a hard time uh, taking, uh, overseeing their uh, production and making sure that everything 
is uh, every label and every uh, legal aspect of your product is being respected. Uh, they've also um, have to uh, manage their reputation and make sure that all their customers in the world are still trusting their products and also stay discreet and not having enemies like Budweiser did with like people that were mad at the brand and that wanted uh, and that drive them into court. But however, because they're like big companies, they have all the means to uh, to um, to like finance uh, campaigns, lawsuits. Uh, media channels, and they're also able to have like talented teams, such as the PR team in that case, that is very important in a crisis, or like the marketing team. So they have like all the finances that could help them, like, face that crisis. Do you have any questions? <laughs>